Hello, today I will be demonstrating how to perform a DLL hijack using Havoc. This will be assuming that you already have uh, a system running Havoc. It doesn't matter what OS, I'm going to be using Kali Linux, uh, as well as uh, a payload on a Windows 10 or 11 machine that is currently healthy. I will not be showing how to get that initial payload on the machine or how to get it past Windows Defender as that, as that is beyond the scope of this video. So first, you're going to want to open a new terminal window and navigate to whatever directory you want to install your tools in. And you're going to want to install Assume Breach's uh, homegrown red team set of tools using the git clone command. If you watched my other video that uh, shows how to encrypt a payload, you will have recognized this tool set and you probably already have it. Uh, we used the Harriet tool in it. This time we're going to be using the Highborn set. Move into the Homegrown Red Team di uh, directory. Instead, you want to go to Highborn. You're going to see a C, a C program, a C sharp program as well as some other directories, and uh, this one is for Visual Studios. So first, we're going to want to view what's in these, and the CS one, the, if I scroll through it, if you, uh, you don't really need much programming knowledge to kind of understand what this is doing. Like, it write, writes out some text there. It sleeps a bit, writes out some more text. This one, it copies the computer defaults exe into a different uh, directory, uh, which is our mock directory. But what we're really looking for, for is this one right here. Do not change this. Do not change that. You're only going to change the IP colon port. If you're doing something like a Python web server where you need the port number, you can keep that. Type the port, uh, type the entire socket, such as. like this but I'm going to instead do uh, choose to admit omit the uh, port number because I'm going to be running it I'm going to be transferring it using the Apache 2 web server once you change your IP you can then write out and exit and then go into the other file, the C file. This is a simple uh, DLL template. You're not going to want to touch anything except this, uh, this stuff in quotation marks right here. I'm going to remove all of this except for the C colon slash slash, and you're going to want to go to your uh, your payload, the interact, and look for what your uh, directory, what directory you installed it into. It seems like I am in the users slash user uh, directory, so I'm going to go back to the DLL template and do users slash slash 
user slash slash and then the name of my payload. You're going to want to make sure you keep these double slashes. That's important. Once you have that changed, you can then write out and exit. And next, you're going to want to compile it. It is a very lengthy uh, command for compiling it. This is the entire thing. I'll give you a second to look at it. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you keep this name. That is important. And make note that there is no, there is no space between uh, the dashes and subsystem. And there's no space between the dash WL, comma, and, and the two dash. With it compiled, we can now move it to our web server. Or if you're using the Python ad hoc web server, you can just start it right here. But I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using uh, the Apache uh, 2 web server, so I'm just going to move it into the var www html directory. Here, 32 dll var www html. Next, we're going to want to compile the highborn. Uh, CS. You're going to want to make sure you have mono complete. You can install it using this command right here. Uh, make sure that you're using it, doing it from root or using sudo. I already have it, so we can move on to the next step. We're going to use mcs dash out. I born PAT, I born CS. That's going to compile it. Now, as you see here, I got highborn.exe. And I can move this to the desktop to be easier to access. Now, going back to my Havoc. You're going to make sure that your payload is still healthy. And you can then run .NET inline execute home galley or wherever your highborn exe is located. And then run it. Now, during the course of this uh, program running in memory, you're going to see that your previous payload goes unresponsive. That is total, totally normal. If you uh, did everything correctly, it should be brought up. It should be brought up uh, in a bit, but you will have also gained a high integrity beacon as well. So your previous beacon will not be needed. And as you see here, we now have our high integrity beacon that so we can switch there, do token find, and we can see if we can grab any tokens. And it seems like we can. So we can do token steal. Uh, let's steal. Four, five, four, four. Now, if I do token get UID, it 
you'd say that I'm now system. There you go. That is how you successfully do a DLL hijacking attack as a UAC bypass. And as you see here, our previous uh, our previous uh, payload has gone back up, but of course we don't need that because our new payload has system level permissions. Now, if you want to learn more about how these DLL hijacking attacks can occur and how to manually do it if you go to your if you go to the c the the cs file you can look through this and it'll actually tell you exactly the steps that you need to do like for instance you can go you can see here that it's copying this file to here. A bit earlier, it had uh, created it had created these two Windows directories. They look very similar to the normal Windows directory, but there's a space there. And you can go down. You can go down through this uh, very short. Uh, C sharp program and actually do the steps yourself, but through your uh, first uh, medium integrity beacon. And there's of course many other ways to perform a UAC bypass. This is just one of them. All right. Thank you for watching.